the no makey show. Someone who broke Washington more, uh, George W. Bush. Remember this guy? Remember George W. Bush? He's just a just a painter, guys. He's just a painter. Um, <laughs> but he does have some opinions about his party that he broke. Don't forget. Well, it was already broken. Let's play it. Do you believe there are compassionate conservatives today? Absolutely. I'm one. And I think there are a lot. Uh, the problem is uh, w with an angry society, uh, it, it, it's hard to punch through with compassion. Mm -hmm. Is it an angry society or is it a certain leaders and people who've stoked that anger and fear? I think there's a, that's an interesting question. Uh, I'm a big leadership guy, and, and so therefore I, I think maybe, maybe the latter part of your question is true, that people stoke anger in order to advance their apolitical agenda. Uh, I do believe there is a more, uh, well, my dad spoke kinder and gentler, uh, and he truly believed it, and I believed in uh, unifier, not divider, and, and, and they, they just can't be empty slogans. You have to believe it in order to be credible. Uh, I think uh, that, yes, it's going to require leadership to help heal, heal wounds. Yeah, he really brought America together. You got to say that if there's one thing to you can say about George W. Bush is that when he left office, America was feeling upbeat and uh, there wasn't much an, an, uh, anonymity. Uh, animosity amongst uh, everyone here. I think I, you know, when he left, I was just really missing the guy because I miss his leadership. Yeah, this is the guy who had the lowest approval rating of any president when he left office prior to right. Donald Trump. Literally, I mean, this is the guy who could not drive down any streets without having like hundreds of people protesting him as he left Washington. I mean, and the crazy thing to me, Simon, is. He's using the same lines that he was mocked throughout his presidency. Yeah. He's like, I'm like, what is this script? You're stupid. Like, exactly. he's like a programming, like a dummy. Like, when I'm not painting, I'm just using my old talking points. I was <laughs> Sorry, thinking the exact same thing. I was thinking that. And I'm so glad you brought up, like, how people hated him. <laughs> Everybody in America seems to have the shortest memory. But, like, don't you remember when he was, like, unique evil and the worst president we've ever had and we have to vote blue no matter who because like th this whole thing like he lied to the whole country and is responsible for so many deaths he's a war criminal and he's allowed to just be on tv now calling himself compassionate with no pushback is, 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 what <laughs> hello it, it's, and a painter <laughs> I, I think it would be obama's uh you know, they were in a tough spot i think um you know not that i have like I uh, have a million great things to say about his uh, President Obama's presidency, but you know the embrace of George W. Bush, I think, it absolved him in some ways of so many of the awful things that he did. And I think also just having worked in the news media long enough, there is, you know, there people in the media are kind of like part of the power structure. You need to be nice to people. You need to have access to people. And there is a normalcy, and like people want to continue. There is this, this tradition where you embrace ex-presidents, it's apolitical, and that's, you know, that's how it works. And just because George W. Bush was elected and, you know, he left his, left the office because his two terms are up without, I guess, any sort of revolution, now we can say, well, George W. Bush was part of that process. He may not have been a great president, but, you know, we got to respect the office. We got to respect the person, which is insane. I mean, like Simon said, he's a war criminal. He was, you know, so many people got, went bankrupt under his, uh, you know, under his presidency. There's nothing good about the guy. I guess, like, maybe compared to Trump, he's not going to, like, I don't know, uh, yell at racial slurs, like, right in front of people. He'll just keep that behind closed doors. Pretty but the yeah, tradition it, we have for these people is absurd. Exactly. But, yeah, Jordan, like, we need to stop comparing everyone to Trump. Like, right. Trump cannot be the bar that, that the bar is, should not ever be that low. You know? No, you're right. Yeah, I mean, you can't, and 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 this is like because when you create the narrative of Trump being the bar, it creates a space for these right wing apologists to come in uh, that are on the left, saying, "Well, well, you know, but Trump was not that bad on foreign policy." I mean, when when we are using Trump as the metric, it's creating this new space. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many leftists or supposed leftists are saying, well, Trump isn't that bad, and it was actually Bush that was worse, and Trump, you know, Trump put our republic at risk. We were like literally 20,000, 30,000 votes away from another round of Trump, who's dismantling every single institution in our country and, and, and putting in folks that are gonna be there for decades and, and, and enabling the gerrymandering and, I mean, uh, civil rights. There's so much that he did 
domestically that was dangerous. And because there's this like, well, but George W. Bush, Iraq war and Afghanistan, you know what I mean? Um, there, there's no, like, it's not a debate between the two of them. That's not where we should be holding our society. We should be talking about a more perfect society and what it means to have stronger institutions in this country that protect our Republic and what it means to not be interventionals, not to be dependent on a, on a defense budget. I mean, those are the conversations we should be having, but you know, I'll get off my soapbox. Um, <laughs> Thanks for watching and listening to The Nomi Key Show. But remember to click like and subscribe on YouTube and please share on social media. If you're not already a patron, please join us for as low as $5 a month on patreon.com slash The Nomi Key Show for early and special content. That investment makes a huge difference. We are not corporate media raking in the dough. It's really you guys that are keeping us going. So please consider being a patron. And to our current patrons, thank you so much. We are incredibly grateful to you. We also now have swag. So check us out on the to get your mugs, your totes, and your stickers.